Hey, hi, uh, my name is Eunyang and I will present our paper capturing diverse and precise reactions to a comment with user generated labels. This research was done at KAIST with awesome collaborators, Eunso Choi, who co first authored this paper, Professor Jung Woo Jang, and Professor Ju Ho Kim, who co advised this paper. Online comment sections facilitate public discourse on social issues. We can find them on many websites, including online news platforms or discussion forums. Users engage with the discussion by leaving comments or replying to others' comments or leaving reactions to others' comments. With comments and replies, users can express their opinion in detail. However, writing a comment or reply requires high effort. On the other hand, with reactions, users can easily express their opinions, but the information delivered through reactions is shallow. And in our research, we take a closer look at this reaction. Prior research has shown that reactions play an important role by influencing users' perception of each comment, perceived public opinion, and their, their opinion on the issue itself. Then we ask, if reactions are that important, how well do current reaction designs capture and deliver users' opinion? There are just various designs of reaction buttons, but we start our investigation with up-down boots, which is the most widely used form of reaction. To understand how users live and interpret reactions through up-down boots, we conducted a formative study with 10 participants. Uh, we prepared a toy comment system with up-down boots and prepared user comments on three controversial issues. In this session, participants were asked to think aloud as they read user comments on social issue. Participants were able to comment, reply, or react to comments as much as they would like to. After the think aloud session, we conducted a semi-structured interview and asked about reason for their reaction or inactions to each comment and their interpretation of aggregated reactions. From the formative study, we observed that participants consider diverse dimensions in their up-down votes. For example, some participants upvoted thoughtful comments, whereas some participants upvoted humorous comments. Also, participants had different thresholds for casting a vote. Some participants left upvotes only when they totally agree with the comments, whereas some people had a lower bar. We also found that the willingness to react decreases when participants cannot precisely express their reaction and make a meaningful contribution. Some participants with a moderate or mixed evaluation of a comment did not leave a reaction as they think their opinion cannot be projected into up or down vote. Also, participants said that they are less willing to react when they think their reaction will make no meaningful impact on the aggregated reaction. Also, participants consider diverse aspects on comment in living reactions. However, when they are asked to interpret others' reactions, seven out of 10 participants assume that up, down both means reactors' agreement or disagreement with the comment. And there were some participants who expressed greater contempt toward unexpected reactions. To summarize, in our formative study, we observed that people live up, down both with diverse regions and thresholds, but when interpreting others' reactions, they make a shallow assumption that up or down votes means agreement or disagreement. Also, we observe that people choose not to read any reaction when they cannot precisely express their opinion or they think the impact of their reaction is small. Based on, based on this observation, we questioned how can you better design reactions to capture and deliver diverse opinions and encourage users to react. In this paper, we propose user-generated labels as an alternative design that captures diverse and precise reactions to a comment. To each comment, users can add descriptive labels by writing a short text, and users can see existing labels below each comment and click on one or more labels that they want to add their vote. With this interaction, users can capture diverse and dynamic reactions. Users can increase perceived contribution of users' reaction by allowing them to make their own labels. Also, by clicking on existing UGLs, users can precisely express their reactions in a lightweighted manner. To understand how users collectively utilize UGLs and how having UGLs affect users' experience, 
we conducted a user study. Uh, first, uh, we question how well do UGLs capture opinions towards comments. Then we question how does having UGLs affect users' experience in evaluating comments. Uh, why these first two questions focus on the primary effect of UGLs? Uh, we, we expand our investigation by exploring the secondary effect of UGLs might have. Uh, we explore whether UGLs allow users to better understand the multifacetedness of public evaluation of a comment, and whether UGLs affect users' tolerance to the opinions that do not align with theirs. We conducted a between subject study with two conditions, binary condition with up-down votes and UGL condition. We prepared four discussion topics and there were eight discussion groups in total. Uh, we recruited 218 participants from Amazon Mechanical Turk and participants were randomly assigned to one of these eight discussion groups. Before the main activity, Participants were asked to answer pre-survey questions on their stance, the perceived relevance and importance of the topic, and their willingness to express. We also measured the tolerance to opinions with opposite stance by asking questions on how they are willing to listen to or learn from opinions with opposite stance. Uh, in the main task, participants were guided to join the discussion by leaving comments, reply, or reactions as much as they would like to. In order to see how reactions and comments are generated and accumulated over time, participants' comments, replies, and reactions were saved and shown to subsequent participants. And we prepared six initial comments before the study so that participants who joined the system in the early stage can still have some comments that they can engage with. In the post survey, we asked questions on their experience in living reactions or seeing others' reactions. Also, in an open-ended question, participants were asked to describe others' reason for reactions that they think, and then we measured the tolerance again. Then uh, I will summarize the key findings for each question. Uh, to see how well the UGLs capture opinions towards comments, we analyzed the diversity in generated UGLs, how mixed evaluations were captured, and how is the number of the reactions are. Uh, user participants generated more than 200 unique labels. And we categorize them as based on the aspect each UGL focuses on. There were some general UGLs with positive or negative sentiments, while most of the UGLs contained specific aspects that they focused on, such as level of agreement or strengths of the argument or writing style or tone of a comment. Uh, UGLs were able to capture uh, mixed evaluations. 14 participants left mixed evaluation on at least one comment by leaving both positive and negative reactions to the same comment. To compare the level of user engagement, we counted the number of reactions left on the six initial comments, and user participants left more reactions than binary participants. To see how having UGLs affect users' experience, uh, we analyze post-survey questions on their experience in living reactions and seeing others' reactions. Regarding living reaction, we ask about perceived accuracy and perceived uniqueness of their reaction. Generating UGL gave highest perceived accuracy followed by voting on UGL and up-down voting in order. The perceived uniqueness was highest with generating UGLs, where there was no significant difference between voting on UGL or up-down voting. Regarding the experience of seeing others' reaction, UGL participants gave higher score than binary participants to question on how they were able to understand others' opinion regarding its comments. Also, UGL participants gave higher score to question on how others' reactions affected their evaluation. Uh, so far, um, we saw how participants use UGLs and how they felt with UGLs. Then we will move to our investigation on potential secondary effects of UGLs. The first effect is the level of understanding of multifacetedness of public evaluation. We found that UGL participants better understand the multifacetedness of public evaluation of comments 
In an open-ended question that participants were asked to think about others' reason for upvote, only around 30% of binary participants mentioned that mentioned the reason other than simple agreement. In the UGL group, the proportion was 50. Almost half of the par participants was able to uh, ident reason, find the other reason than simple agreement. Another effect that we looked into is the effect of UGL on the tolerance toward opinion with opposite stance. In both pre and post survey, participants in both group held a moderate level of tolerance, and there was no difference between the pre-survey and post-survey or between the conditions. Although the UGLs were not effective in increasing participants' tolerance, we could, we could observe that participants left more positive reactions to comment with opposite stance. There were three out of six initial comments that had the opposite stance with each participant, and UGL participants left positive both on more comments. So far, I have summarized our study results, and I'd like to move on to the discussion. Uh, first is the level of user engagement. Um, UGLs require more mental and physical effort than up-down votes and can hinder user reactions. However, at the same time, UGLs make users' reaction more precise and unique, and thereby increase users' willingness to react. In our study, we could see that this benefit outweighed the cost of required effort, and participants with UGLs left more reactions. However, it is important to understand that the success of UGLs depends on the early users' engagement. This graph shows the average number of reactions per person accumulated over the number of participants. The blue line indicates the number of opt-down votes the red line is the number of UGLs generated, and the yellow line is the number of UGL votes, including the generated UGLs. When we compare these two graphs, in the first graph, only UGL participants generated many UGLs that other participants can vote on, and the number of reactions was higher in the UGL condition from the very beginning. On the other hand, in the second graph, only participants did not generate many labels, and it took some time until UGL participants leave more reactions than the binary participants. Therefore, in applying the concept of UGLs, it would be helpful to introduce systemic support that can reduce early users' burden of generating UGLs. The second discussion point is the effect of showing diverse and precise reactions. Uh, in our study, participants say that UGLs help them better understand others' evaluation and they could evaluate each comment more thoroughly. Uh, prior research has shown that increased understanding between people with opposite opinions can reduce the dislike toward each other. However, in our study, increased understanding did not lead to an increase in the tolerance. There were some participants who noted that seeing others UGL that aligns with their opinion increased their confidence and it could be that such experience reinforce their attitude and offset the positive effect of seeing diverse opinions. This implies that a more directed design or intervention would be needed to increase the tolerance. Uh, future work can explore the effect of UGLs and their application in various contexts. Uh, one interesting question would be how the UGLs affect the user's commenting behavior. As UGLs can capture detailed feedback on each comment, it could motivate users to leave higher quality comments or discourage users from leaving comments. Another important exploration would be adopting the user-generated labels in a large-scale and long-term deployment setting. Uh, the, the exact design of UGLs can be adjusted to afford a large number of users and capture their long-term engagement. Also, the concept of UGLs can be applied to various platforms with different purpose and ways of communications. For example, it'd be interesting to investigate how UGLs could improve user experience in platforms focused on question answering or video sharing. Yeah, today I introduced user-generated labels as an alternative design that captures precise and diverse user reactions. Uh, you can find the paper and demo of this research at reaction.kickstep.org. Uh, yeah, then thank you for listening. Thank you very much.
very interesting work. So we still have a few minutes, uh, two or three minutes for questions. Is there anyone from uh, the public that would like to ask a question to you? You can just switch on your camera or microphone or write in the chat as you wish. Because otherwise I might have a, a couple of questions uh, for you. Um, very, very nice work. I think it's a very nice idea, the one to allow people to express their, let's say, opinions in a, in a richer way. Um, I was wondering if you, um, let's say, got inspiration compared, looked into, into the literature. Uh, it's a little bit old, but it's still, I think, relevant on folksonomies. So people, you know, creating taxonomies uh, for web content, uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, in a, in a, in a, in a um, uh, say, autonomous uh, and uh, necessarily, uh, well, uh, unchecked way. So do you see any similarity or issues that could uh, somehow arise between these two ways for people to express their own way to tag and label content online? Mm. Let's see. Um, so your question would be uh, the relation between our research and some other research that um, discovered or invited online users to create some taxonomy together, right? Well, I mean, back in the days, uh, uh, I think it was uh, 10 years ago, uh, bookmarking <laughs> websites, uh, right? They, they also allow people to create their own labels, right? And what created was the ability to create folksonomy. So uh, user-generated tags to categorize content. Now, the purpose was okay. different, of course, right? Yeah. But it was to, there were some commonalities. So I was wondering if maybe you looked into that uh, um, to be honest, I haven't looked into those literature, but as I um, listened to your um, summary of the research, I see the commonality with my research and that research is that um, with the inviting users, by inviting users to make their own tech, we can get more literature information of what it means and what its values are. It may be, um, it can, it maybe it's not that apparent when it seems from outside, but when you see the user generated text um, made by the users who really um, read through the information, who really read through the comments, or who were really invited to uh, save the information or do something with the information, that really gives the richer um, metadata or richer like perspective of the information. It's yeah. yeah, maybe connected to this, but unless uh, anybody from the crowd, uh, from the public wants to ask a question, perhaps just a, a quick follow up on this, because uh, in, in this study, which by the way was very nicely designed and executed, you, um, you rec recruited people from Mechanical Turk. Yeah. Right, uh, under monetary incentives. Yeah. So I, I wonder, how, how do you see, let's say, the generalization of your findings? beyond mm -hmm. a crowd uh, that is you know, uh, recruited in this way under controlled. Uh, so do you see any potential issues arising when you release these uh, you know, openly to an open crowd? Yeah. In our study, we uh, intentionally didn't put any require, required task, but they were um, guided to spend some time in the system. I think that setting uh, made them to do more, say, work than they would do in like the world setting. For example, the number of reactions can be very different from the number we got from the real world setting. Like, mm -hmm. but because the but as we have a between condition setting, the difference between condition will be still hold in will be still held in the real world setting, I guess. Mm 